We're very pleased to welcome uh, both Professor Rosemary Batt and Professor Ron Applegate to give our first uh, Work in Equalities annual lecture here uh, on the topic of new forms of governments. In the US model, as you all know, we have some of the worst healthcare in the world, um, despite being uh, a wealthy nation, but really what we have is extraordinary inequality. In the United States, we have very serious uh, problems around the conditions of work and pay for low-wage workers in healthcare. And about 30% of all workers in healthcare uh, face stagnant or declining wages, and they make about two-thirds of the median wage in the country, which is not enough to live on. The fragmented system creates enormous inequality, both for patients and for workers across uh, the U.S. Rose was raising the whole issue of how we get to good practice in training in the health and care sectors. And she was, I think, highlighting um, a series of problems which we have in the UK as well as in the US. The story I want to tell today is one of community empowerment. And more specifically, uh, I want to tell a story about empowering communities uh, to govern local economic development by means of organizational innovation. Inequality is not only persisting, but it's actually increasing. And so there are a lot of resources, both public and private, being directed into this revitalization. Uh, but those who are already experiencing inequality have been disadvantaged even more. So incorporating these communities into this revitalization is absolutely essential if we're going to combat inequality. In the United States, unions and employers have come together to form what are called multi-employer training funds. So a group of hospitals, all of which have a union contract, come together and they pledge less than 1% of their gross payroll uh, to provide a training fund. And then jointly, they create skills and training systems that allow these low-wage workers to move into the next category of jobs. We have a situation right now where there's, there are fewer and fewer resources and more and more demands upon the service. And uh, the only way to de deliver on that is to focus very much upon what is effective, what is successful, um, what we know works, and also what we know doesn't work. Most of these workers are um, are disadvantaged, they probably haven't had a great high school education, they need remedial literacy and numeracy, they have their working parents, and, so, and they lack confidence. The class divide between here and moving to, up the ladder is, is extraordinary. Hearing about what's been going on in relation to health care and local governments uh, in the US uh, is very informative for us and helps us in our debates about, for example, the devolution of, um, in Greater Manchester of health and social care and how we might think about trying to do positive things around this, these new opportunities at the local level. But the thing that both the UK uh, and the US have in common that is important is that through privatisation, through devolution, there are now opportunities for communities to come up with their version of what privatization should look like. That is, have the work outsourced to them of providing services or trying to bring about positive change. What we have to do is think of making the connection with um, community politics and local activism to generate pressures for relevant reforms while of course paying attention to the need to preserve national structures and national systems so that we don't have local anarchy.